Hello. Today we're going to talk a little bit about air ejector theory. Now air ejectors, they're very simple, no moving parts. That's why we really like them because there's a lot less for them to uh, break down for on us. An air ejector is no different than what say you've seen at the beach with a airbrush for, uh, for face painting or for a t-shirt. That uses air to entrain the paint that's going to be put onto your face or your t-shirt with an air ejector. For our system, a steam jet air ejector, we're going to use steam to molecularly entrain any air and non-condensable gases that are in our condenser and remove them, which creates a vacuum. Our vacuum is necessary for more efficient operations of our reactor plant, and we like efficiency because more efficient, more money, right? Everybody likes that. So your basic parts, you've got a convergent divergent nozzle and the inlet. A suction chamber, and this is where all the magic is going to happen. We'll talk about that. You got your diffuser, where we're going to slow it back down because we're going to do supersonic. That's right, little tiny sonic booms inside here. Not really, I'm kidding. And then our uh, piping going going down to our condenser this is where we're going to draw those air non condensable gases out of our condenser. So one of the things that we have, and I got down here a little blown up view of the. Convergent divergent nozzle. We're going to talk about the three steps that it goes through inside there and how that pressure is coming down and the velocity is coming up to create that really high, super fast, supersonic steam that's going to cause the air non cancelable gases to get shot out, go through our diffuser, and then get exhausted out. So now with a convergent divergent nozzle, we all understand that a uh, system that is in steady state, mass flow rate 1 equals mass flow rate 2 equals mass flow rate 3. So as it's going through, the mass flow rates are consistent. Now that means, we take that, break that down into our base equations, the density times the area times the speed is equal to the density times the area times the speed, which is equal to the density times the area times the speed. Now that we know that, we can look at our convergent divergent nozzle and see how we can go from a 150 pound steam system, go through, drop the pressure, create, cause the speed to go up, and hit our critical pressure ratio about 0.55 of the initial uh, pressure. So going down to about 80 pounds, and we'll reach called sonic velocity. And that is where the properties of the steam are going to invert once we hit the critical pressure ratio. And that's going to happen right here in the throat of our nozzle. So I know that my density times my area times my speed are all going to be equal. So with going from point 0.1 to point 0.2, my area is getting smaller. That's going down. Now this is steam, so it is a gas, so it is a compressible. It's going to, the density was actually going to go up just a little tiny bit. It's going to go up a little bit. But the area change is much greater. And that's going to cause our speed, so our velocity, is going to go up because of that. And it's right here in the throat, we're going to hit sonic velocity. After that happens, now we're going to get down between points two and point three. Our density and area and speed. Well, like I said before, steam is a gas, and because it has the properties of a gas, when it reaches the divergent part of that nozzle, it's going to try to fill the entire chamber that it's going, because it's a gas. It will expand to occupy all portions of its container. So, as we go through here, our area, yes, that's actually going to go up pretty good. But the density, that's the factor here, is going to go down tremendously as that steam expands to occupy all portions of its container, so that's going to cause my speed to go even higher. And that's how we get supersonic steam going through here in our suction chamber. Now inside the suction chamber, I've got all kinds of air and non condensable gases inside that suction chamber. And I'm going to take that steam that I just made supersonic, and I'm going to send it 
flying through here, and it's going to molecularly entrain the air in non-condensable gases one molecule at a time. And what does molecularly entrain mean? That means I'm going to take a supersonic molecule of water, H2O, and it's going to be going so fast, whatever oxygen or nitrogen or whatever is in there, other air particles or non-condensable gases, just means it doesn't condense at the temperatures and pressures we're currently at, hit it, send it flying through into the diffuser. And as I knock these molecules of air and non-condensable gases out of the suction chamber, well, the air and non-condensable gases that are in the condenser, those are also a gas. And they're going to want to fill and occupy all portions of its container because I'm going to create a low pressure area here because I just removed matter from the suction chamber and the matter from the condenser is going to want to flow up and fill that suction chamber until it's at an equilibrium pressure or vacuum around 28, 27 inches of mercury vac uh, vacuum. Absolute. No, not absolute. Just at vacuum. So that all that air and non condensable gases are going to come up and fill the suction chamber. And they're going to continue going through the, the diffuser. Now, into the diffuser, well, I need to be able to send that someplace else. And in the, the diffuser, the area and speed, now that the once it's molecularly entrained, the air and non-conductible gases is going to slow down a little bit, and those properties are going to go back to where they were before they were supersonic. And the diffuser is going to, so I've got my density and area and speed. Area is going to go up. My speed is going to come back down. And I've got a fan. Sending that a gland exhaust fan, so a steam, so a steam packing gland exhaust fan and other things that are just going to uh, distribute those out into the atmosphere. Unless you're in a boiling water reactor and then you have to condense those, contain them, and let them decay away. Pressurized water reactor, so the steam side is separate, you don't have to worry about that. And that is how the air ejector works. Thank you.